welcome everybody. This is the uh, ORI FPGA meetup for the 27th of August, uh, 2024. And what we do is we talk about what we've done over the past week, what we have planned for the next week, if we need any resources from ORI, and if we have any roadblocks that we need help with. And we'll start off with our uh, stand-up reports with uh, with Paul. You have the floor. Hello. Um, yeah, the lab, the remote lab, uh, managed to install the, the upgrade hard drives not hard drives, SSDs, NVMe drives. They're answering up now. I had to do some BIOS settings adjustments, which is a blast from the past, but there you go. Um, I don't have any of them working in any useful way yet, though. So I will be restoring the uh, system to its pre-existing condition before I leave on travel in the morning. So nothing, uh, nothing else to report, I don't think, on the remote lab. Okay, and and just as a recap, the uh, the goal of the hardware is to is to do what exactly? Well, the hope is it'll make the virtual machines work faster. Don't really know why they're as slow as they've always been, but uh, one possibility is that it's the the storage as a bottleneck, and this should relax that bottleneck considerably. We'll have more storage for each VM, and should be faster. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I think we've explored a couple of other options on, on looking like why is it not uh, as quick as it has been. It does not seem to be processor limited, uh, but it does seem to be memory I.O. related. So I'm looking forward to hearing how this uh, uh, new hardware works for us. And uh, even if it doesn't dramatically improve the speed, then then we'll have uh, some some additional resources in, in the Remote Lab West. So thank you very much for for handling that. Okay, and then uh, let's hand it off to let's let's let uh, Ken Easton talk. Uh, tell us how it's going with your your work on Hyperia with the Polyphase Filter Bank and and the challenges that you've been facing with with getting things working. Yeah, no no real updates since last week. I uh, been busy on other fronts, uh, taking a new signed up for a new job here and. Got all the kids off to college, so sorry I'm a no off this week, but uh, I will be getting back on it right soon. So, well, uh, congratulations on getting kids off to school. I totally understand, and um, yeah, and congratulations on uh, new employment. So uh, that's a the good deal. And so for those listening, we we actually have a jobs board on our Slack at ORI, and we try to to help each other with. Um, uh, paid employment and and volunteer opportunities through through that channel. So if you're interested in networking with us, that's a that's a place uh, that we we have open to our, our participants. Um, so yeah, the um, I think that we got a couple of breakthroughs uh, with the high Hyferia side. Uh, this would be the payload side. So when we talk about opulent voice, that's the uplink protocol, and uh, yeah, the transmission side was demonstrated recently at the University of Puerto Rico's RockSetX launch, and with the with the older uh, four area FSK version, the more recent next version with the minimum shift king is is what Matthew and Everest and other and and Aaron and others will will be talking about on this call. Uh, so things are, are proceeding. We're we're looking at at. Uh, making a, a a demonstration of the MSK version um, as early as October. Uh, but if that does not work for us, then possibly May of uh, 2025 at Hamvention might be a good place to to publicly demonstrate this uh, this technology. So the the uplink protocol can be used as an uplink protocol for the whole uh, transceiver. Uh, space-based or terrestrial-based, uh, or it can be a uh, point-to-point link that's standalone. So that's a nice thing about the the protocol. It, it has some flexibility here. So, hey, let's uh, let's hear from some Matthew. Uh, you have the floor. All right, good morning. And um, my job situation might be in a little bit of flux as well. So I've been a little um, uh, out of pocket this week. Uh, I keep hoping things are going to slow down so I can get back to work on the uh, MSK modem. So I, I haven't really made much progress this week. Um, I, I had started updating the README with some theory of operation 
uh, details and then uh, that got set aside, but hopefully I can get back to that. And then the main thing in terms of uh, making progress for the modem itself is just seeing if I can get the the loops, uh, the Costas loop stable. One of them seems to be pretty stable, but the other one um, isn't, isn't, doesn't seem to be locking or if it locks, it's just for a short period of time. I believe Aaron had more success with his open CPI uh, design at one point. They, it, it stayed locked for, um, I think, about an hour. Uh, so I can let him comment on that. So that in terms of the, the modem itself, that's the uh, current um, thing that needs to be resolved. And then um, from there, it, just getting the RF path, working with the analog digital ADI firmware and um, getting the DMA working as well with the AMH ADI firmware. So there, there's some work that can still progress. Uh, and I know Everest have been working on some of that. Um, so hopefully, as people have time, we can get back to it and, and get a fully working system. I don't think we're that far off, but we just, um, you know, there's some a little, some work to be done still. But I think we're well on our way towards that, getting that done. So that, that's all I had. Yeah, thank you. And uh, congratulations are probably in order for the uh, job achievements. And, and uh, we're, we'll pull in for you. So uh... Yeah, I'll post some more details once uh, everything's finalized. Yeah, wonderful. Good, good deal. Okay, and Aaron, uh, you have the floor. Uh, yes. So since last week, I've been able to create an installer script um, that builds everything in OpenCPI all the way to the package that I distributed it. Um, kind of went on a side quest and where I'm hosting the source code, I have a CI pipeline that actually does all the building as well using Ubuntu 22.04, which every said that's the version he's using. The only difference uh, right now from what Ever Everest is running and what I'm running is the version of Vivado. I'm running 2021.1, and I think he mentioned 2022.1. Um, so I did request uh, credentials for remote labs so that I can use that version um, because <laughs> Vivado tools are, are really big and they take up a lot of your hard drive space. Uh, I don't have uh, any to spare right now. As far as uh, the success that I had previously that Matthew had mentioned, I did I did run it for an hour, but that was with the, the wrong F1 and F2 um, frequencies settings. Uh, so I was running in the wrong configuration. Uh, since then, I have I have not been able to, to reproduce that success of, uh, of running with uh, one hour without any bit errors. Um, but now that I got out the build out of the way, uh, I plan on focusing um, back on the modem itself and and trying to achieve on um, what I had previously done um, with the correct settings uh, of the modem. That's all I have for this week. Well, that's a lot. And for for people that are listening that are not um, as familiar with Open CPI uh, as maybe some of us are, um, would you like to? to uh, take a few minutes to explain what OpenCPI is and how it can uh, deliver uh, good results for uh, digital communications projects like ours. Sure. So OpenCPI is a heterogeneous framework. Um, and what it tries to tackle is, is um, the FPGA and the general purpose processor CPUs and kind of have them in a level playing field. In, in such a way that uh, you can move data to and from them uh, in a uniform way across different applications and across different platforms. So right now for the MSK modem, I implemented uh, some applications that run using OpenCPI on the Pluto SDR, but those can be ported onto other platforms that OpenCPI supports like the ZC706 or the ZCU102. Um, and what it tries to do is kind of like Linux de de device drivers, um, and for example, on the transceiver, the 809363, um, we currently support that as one of the transceivers it supports. And it kind of out of the box works. Um, so it has DMA paths, it has ways to turn knobs, like uh, they're called properties in OpenCPI. And that's how I'm uh, changing the, these frequencies and the values of the modem using the OpenCPI properties um, versus reading uh, specific memory locations in memory. Uh, OpenCPI is, is very XML driven. 
Um, and there's different, you can ab abstract the platform at different levels. So there's the platform itself, the Pluto SDR, and then you can, and then you can target either the CPU, the ARM that's running in, in the Zinc or the FPGA. Um, so that's just kind of a high level overview of open CPI, um, and, and how it can be applied. It, it's, it's primarily right now focused on software defined radios, but it doesn't have to be. It can be pretty much anything that requires different computing, uh, data, data engines like FPGAs or, or CPUs. Uh, and there's some GPUs as well that, um, that we were trying, trying to, to resupport in, in more recent versions like OpenCL or NVIDIA CUDA. And for people that want to learn more about OpenCPI, um, like from a from a getting started uh, perspective, like what would be the best place for for them to go? Where would be where would you send them? So OpenCPI.org is our landing page, our website. Um, but uh, the project itself is hosted on GitLab. Um, so GitLab.com/OpenCPI, and then we also have a documentation. Uh, page that you can it's referenced from the website um, opencpi.gitlab.io and there there's getting started there's kind of um, a lot of documentation on on what the framework is and how how to work with the framework and in, in different levels like if you want to do fpga development or you want to do what we call rcc which is stands for resource constrained c um, so that's targeting cpus like the arm or the x86 64 uh, just a general purpose processor. But yeah, those those are the places I would send uh, people um, to get familiar with the framework. Okay, thank you so much for, for explaining. Um, and yeah, we we think uh, think it's a remarkable work and, and highly useful. And we're looking forward to seeing how it can help uh, Opulent Voice uh, come about and and to achieve some some end-to-end uh, demonstrations. So it's a sort of an end-to-end -end system is what we're after. Um, you know, Opulent Voice is the uplink, uh, the existing DPB, S2, and S2X work as the downlink uh, with a lot of processing and some some intelligent uh, some intelligence in the the uh, the payload or the the central node as well. Um, so we're very much looking forward to to actually showing all of this working because we're a demonstration first organization. Um, upcoming events that we're looking to to show off our work. Um, we're looking at some some events in in October, so we have some workshops and some some potential tours and and a lot of work happening in Vancouver, British Columbia in October. Uh, we're looking at, at coming to Pacificon um, and San Ramon, California in October as well. And if if not that, then the next big opportunity. Uh, that we've been invited to for for showing our work and and demonstrating um, results over the air in person. Here you go, it works uh, at Hamvention in uh, May of 2025. So so we've been issued an invitation to participate there. We're looking at that very seriously. So these demonstrations are uh, what we use as sort of uh, organizing deadlines for our work. Uh, so that's the the lay of the land, uh, so to speak, for the next year or so. And uh, looking forward to to getting these things up and running. So thank you everybody for for coming and and sharing all of your your wonderful work. And we will continue to to help and support this work on on Slack over the next week. Any last uh, comments or anything that anybody wants to share before we close? Well, thank you everybody. Uh, anybody listening, if you would like to be part of this work or if you have a project that you think might fit in with our uh, sort of philosophy and mindset, uh, then please visit openresearch.institute slash getting dash started and uh, get on board. And we, uh, we look forward to talking to you. Thank you, everybody. See you soon.